Falcom and Teo Minven. We come live from the frozen wastelands of Eastern Canada, where America was first contacted by Europeans to try and replicate the saga as fast as we can. The year is 1000, and our hero Carl Zephany has gotten tired of the ancient fairies' custom of having sex with sheep and just being weird. So we are tasked with exploring and settling new lands, past the mighty Sea of Worms. I only mention the Sea of Worms because whoever drew this on the map editor deserves all the credit in the world. It looks fantastic. Just like in real life, the Faroese Islands are tiny and we must use ships for pretty much anything that isn't lumberjacking. We start with the most basic buildings and are limited to 10 population, but at least we have a hero we can use to purge the new lands. I like that this is a remake of Inland Saga, but from what I've read on the ancient tomes of Wikipedia, Carl Zephany sailed from Iceland to explore the new world because his dad, Eric the Red, had already settled there and even seen Canada and Greenland already. Although it's been a long time since I read about this and I might be talking out of my ass as usual. Anyways, we turn around to bring a villager because the sea is lava and it hurts the ships. Ah, land ahead. Get ready to do some damage, fellas. We drop our hero first and without even saying hi, the natives come to squabble with us. Since I wasn't paying fully attention, our hero fell and now I have not a single useful unit left. Great fucking start. Alright, our intrepid settler set sail towards new lands. But not this one. These guys are not cool enough for us yet. Ah, a little murder has never killed anyone. We board everyone quickly to avoid death and unload the sneaky villager so he can fix the damage the worms did to our ship. Much better. And good I stopped to fix it because holy shit the worms are aggressive to our weak Faroese timber. We take another little stop on an iceberg for more maintenance and I think it's really cool how historically they made this, with the iceberg still being friendly to humans before the big betrayal of the Titanic. Going down the coast of Greenland, we are graced with the sight of green pastures and some salmon or cod. I don't, I don't really know what fish they have in Greenland. We unload on the tip of the island and start our colonization process. Before anyone wonders, I'll just get it out in the open. I won't be clubbing any seals. I think that's a fair place to draw a line of what's acceptable. So instead, we will be murdering the whole population of polar bears on the island to sell their fur. Field of Age starts making its way across the outer ocean, officially organizing a fence on our journey across the land of ice. Damn it! why are they killing the whales? We find a gold vein on the west side of the island and a single shrubbery, nothing else really. Back in Nook, new structures being erected while my screen is polluted by information I should probably read, and we get ready for yet another voyage across the sea. Ah cool, new units and technologies. I wonder what they do. First bear hunted and we build barracks to replenish the losses of fighting 400 kilo beasts. The hunt continues up the icy peaks of Greenland, and as the pack grows in size, our adventurers become more daring, venturing forth into the frozen north without thinking twice about the dangers ahead. Thanks, I would have never guessed that ice and glaciers makes a place inhospitable. While we continue the walk, I have a question for whoever watches this. As fun as these videos are to make and everything, I feel like I've reached a plateau regarding the quality of the script and story. Throughout this year, I have tried a lot of different things and styles of narration and story making for the speedruns. What do you think is best? I don't know. Making up a random story, narrating what I do, making up more historical or whatever. I don't know. It's just I feel very lost with this right now. It's not mandatory or like, I'm not asking you to do something or telling you what to do, but I'm not your mom. But it would be nice because it helps and you know. Anyways, we build a blacksmith to sharpen our tools and finish exploring the, well, the nothing, because there's nothing up here. It's time to start making our way toward Canada. The maple syrup and war crimes await us. Speaking of war crimes, did you know Canada is a big part of why war crimes are a big no-no? Our beaver-loving friends were pretty fucking cruel back in World War I. Like, throwing food to the Germans while they were starving to make them unsuspecting, just to throw grenades right after. I think it's pretty obvious, but let me just reassure you that we at Big Stick Studios do not condone any war crimes or crimes against humanity in any shape or form and abhor any sort of negative act against any other human being or animal. Unless they're Belgium. Anyways, we start preparing a new army to storm Canada, because you can be sure as shit those savages won't just accept the will of Odin peacefully. We pick up the lost soldiers around the island of rocks and nothing more and set sail towards what seems to be the wrong way, after realizing there's nothing but rocks here as well. The coast of Canada is littered with sea towers, on land. I understand it's the only thing that fits the building style, but of course I have to pick on it. But we land in a safe corner and start the first ever European lumber yard in the new world, because fuck for an environment. This small island is still populated by the Skrellings, but not for long, as our good buddy Carl Zephany needs peace for his lumberjacks. 
Luckily there are just some X-Men around, and towers, so the cleaning of the island goes very quick and easy. We load our angry men back on the ships, or better, we fix the ships a bit before from the worm damage and then load our angry men. And the new ones from Greenland, because I feel the native savages can't fight the tiny army we have there. While the new fellas cross the ocean, we slowly make our way through their teepees and sea towers. I gotta say, I was a bit worried about this scenario because I tried a custom scenario, and it kicked my ass, because I don't know how to read the objectives. But so far it has been nothing but smooth sailing and fun exploration. It has its very obvious difficulty with the ship repair and the lack of wood everywhere, but it's not something that makes the scenario boring or annoying to play. Anyways, we arrive at the first Krillin King and we do a Viking on him, tying his arms apart and pulling them until his chest cavity opens, a good old blood ego. Which by the way, he was a real form of Norse execution. How metal is that? Killing the kings here is a secondary objective, but I don't feel I have enough resources to invade Iceland yet. And it may sound stupid to be cautious against Irish monks, but as the name says, they're Irish. Those fuckers fight as well as they drink. With the Skrellings dealt with, Carl Zephany finally decides to join the story named after him, and we start preparing the journey back to the land of fire and ice. We also build random crap in Canada, like an outpost and a monastery to finish more secondary objectives and accept Jesus in our hearts. Which makes our people a lot calmer, and somehow impervious to worm damage to our ships. The journey is much easier and we just cut through the ocean instead of island hopping like some proper peasants, to gather in Greenland until our expeditionary forces are ready. To keep it historical, we also send back some villagers from Canada so the others can be dismembered by the natives, and also because we need some folks to build our new colony in Iceland. The story here is so messy and confusing. Our fierce warriors disembark and are met immediately by him again, Mel Gibson. The fight against the king of the wife-beating anti-Semites goes as expected, and after heavy losses on both sides, the coast is literally clear. Our villager goes to work on a barracks, and then an outpost because I started liking them now. Some palisades are also erected while more soldiers are trained, and a dock because this is an island and we're vikings, and houses so our people don't have to sleep in the volcano for warmth. A blacksmith as well, because they're cool buildings. And walling the cliffs, just to avoid having the army of Mel Gibson from just steamrolling us. With our new city built from nothing in minutes, the troops roll out of the walls to complete the final objective, kicking the Irish out of Iceland. Even though we're Christian now, we go head first towards their monastery, just to not lose practice, and stick around to deal with production buildings. Charles Zephany as a throwing X-Men would have been really useful in the beginning, but no, he wanted to join just after we had already colonized the Americas. What's even the point of naming the scenario after him? Oh shit, look, we have our first immigrant. Who would have guessed that destroying a whole island would entice their army to switch sides? We find another monastery, and erase said monastery, and I guess everything around. Wouldn't it make more sense to save the monastery since we converted to Christianity now? He's not really doing anything besides just walking around our city. Should I give him a citizenship? Very little stands between Carzephany and Victory, and I hope it's just this monastery, and not Bob in our city. I'd be sad killing him. But even the game knows the importance of Bob joining us. And with our original dock strangely sinking into the ocean, the scenario ends in 1 hour, 40 minutes and 26 seconds. The total scenario time is just what I said. Feels a bit pointless to repeat it. It's not a great time, but if you want a proper speedrun, I recommend checking the McGreevy's run on YouTube. I think you managed to do it under 50 minutes. This was cool, definitely an upgrade from Vinland Saga and its horde of alcoholic Greenlanders living in stone castles and their stolen Roman ballistas. It felt at times a bit all over the place, with Carl Zephany joining so late and some obvious inconsistencies with the actual saga. But then again, this is a video game, so who cares? Partial time stands at 200 hours, 4 minutes and 27 seconds, finally breaking the 200 hour mark, and I think I can finally say I'm burnt out from this. Victors and Vanquish scenarios are good, but also really tough to write stuff that sounds interesting or entertaining in my opinion, as you can see by how long these take to make. So I'm gonna take a little break from them, and work on some other ideas I've been having over the last few months, and take my time to do better with the remaining scenarios. Speedruns are still happening, and you should grab some stone tools, because we're going far back in time. Back to Mesopotamia.